This DYM podcast is brought to you by Leader Treks. Go to serve, return ready to lead. On a Leader Treks mission trip, you'll serve and get out of your comfort zone. And through the program, your students will learn how to lead. They will bring that leadership and confidence back to your youth ministry, and it will make a difference for the rest of the year. Learn more and sign up at leadertreks.org. And since we love DYM, listeners always get 10% off resources by using the code DYM10 at leadertrex.org. That's DYM10 at leadertrex.org. Two, three. Hello. hey everybody! Welcome to the Download Youth Ministry Podcast. Doug Hello. is here with Senior Pastor Jason. Yeah, bring the energy. Yeah, Queen <laughs> Katrina, Katie Edwards so with a hat and curly hair. Yes. She's rocking both. Did today. not take a shower. And, uh, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, yeah. <laughs> What's up? With a haircut. Yeah, I sure did. It's still growing. It's still in the growing out phase. Hey, this is episode it was short. Three twenty-seven. Before yes, we it talk is. about Thank our you. podcast now. Work, we should mention that our primary sponsor is Orange. Yes, yeah, we love Orange. orange. Oh, I'm wearing orange underwear right now. <laughs> just in cool. Just prove it. <laughs> no, no, don't don't prove it. I don't want to see that. Don't prove it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're all excited about the Orange Conference that we're all going to. We'll do a live podcast there. Um, oh, it's probably exciting. sold out. We talk about that all the time. Absolutely. Uh, a big announcement, hopefully coming up soon. Oh. About, uh, Orange's XP3 curriculum. Yes, we do. Could just tease that out. Top bit. secret. Can you just tell Jason and I right now? Nope. No, the, there's microphones yeah. right here. There's four microphones. But they won't watch this It'll be a, a couple days, just right? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a couple right days. Now. I can't. can't Everybody move. press mute on your no, speakers. It's not, even, it's it's not even confirmed. They don't move as fast as we move. Hey, that's right. right. No, we move. We're fast movers. We make decisions. Yeah. Boom. Things are happening. So, I like shakers. that about yeah. you. Uh, we also are sponsored by our friends, Leader Trex, who we love dearly. We do. Uh, Josh and I were just with Doug Franklin. He He's a good here dude. To help us. Uh, we're all working together on the Student Leadership Conference. Mm-hmm. Dot com. Uh, dot com. <laughs> <laughs> dot com or dot net. I don't know. Whatever. Just, just Google it. it. <laughs> just join us. It's dot com, I think. Just, that feels us. right. Yeah. In yeah. Indiana, right? It's going to be awesome. Your best and brightest in Indiana this July. And speaking of Indiana, Bethel University is a, a podcast sponsor for this spring. That's right. Thank you, Bethel. Very, very exciting. And um, to introduce our whole new series, our podcast network. Yeah, today we're introducing. With by Giving Central. That's right. Give Central, an unbelievable resource. Make sure you check it out. And also, we have a... It's beautiful. Isn't yeah, it's, that it's delightful? Nice. Who made this graphic? Most of the people, though, are not watching. Oh. So oh, you're right. Sorry. They're listening yeah. to the podcast now. <laughs> we should describe the large screen right. TV behind us. Josh, you've taken the lead on this. Yeah. Right? So, we decided to create a podcast network where we could help and build the platforms of other great youth ministry podcasts that are out there. So, we have brought a total of six shows into the fold. This, of course, being the flagship show, the Download Youth Ministry Podcast. 27 episodes. Yeah. I'd yeah. Say. Hey, Top oh, that. Oh, Top oh. that. Uh, maybe, too, maybe a few too many episodes, but whatever. Uh, in addition, to that, we have uh, a great podcast. It used to be called the Other Student Ministry Podcast. It's now called Youth Ministry Hacks. Justin Knowles and Matthew are hosting that show. It's going to be great. I'm excited about Just hacks. their new show. Hacks, tips, tricks, ideas. Yeah. Great. So their latest show is on like uh, interns, how to have a great you know in ministry intern program Ooh, and little tips and tricks. Very good stuff. Uh, the next show is Mentor Me. So Doug and I have conducted about 50 interviews with youth ministry thought leaders, uh, speakers, teachers, all all that stuff. And so we're posting those a couple times a month. Mentor me. You can check that out on iTunes and whatever. It'll be great. Uh, what? 15 minutes? 50, uh, yeah, 20 minutes, probably give or take. Uh, so there, there's four of those up right now. We'll be adding a couple every month. Uh, Derry Prinkert is a youth ministry veteran. He's been in youth ministry for over 20 years and he started a brand new podcast. Only has a couple episodes out called My Third Decade. So it's like a veterans youth ministry podcast. It's really, really good. Wow. It's cool. He takes a simple topic and unpacks it for 15 minutes. It's just him on a mic and it's he's, so good. He's smart. He's caring. He's yeah. Creative. Really genuine. Yeah. 
pastor's heart. And, funny. Yeah, and he works in the middle of Amish country in Indiana and just has a great perspective on youth ministry. He has a ton of resources on DYM, too. So great guy. Uh, Frank Gill is a show called 15 Minutes with Frank. All he does is he, for 15 minutes, talks about what he did last night at youth group. Really great. So really clever. That's how we met him. Yeah, he's, like, he he's great. about the DYM membership and... People were sending it to us. I'm, I like this guy. I like yeah. his heart. Yep. And I've spoken at his church, actually. Like, I really like him. He's a good dude. So he's got 50 shows already that we brought into the network. And now he'll be adding a show every week with his youth ministry, too. And then finally, another brand new show. And we have had so many other people apply already, which is fun. But these are the shows we're, we're ready to talk about. Um, another new show is called What It Is and What It Means, Pop Culture and Youth Ministry. 15 minutes on a weekly basis to tell you what's happening in pop culture, how it relates to youth ministry, how you can be informed when the next big thing comes through pop culture and you're like, what is a fidget spinner? And then you listen to that show and it would tell you what fidget spinners are. Uh, or Pop sockets. Pop sockets are huge right now for another week or two and then they're gone. But <laughs> Doug, I noticed you have a pop socket. You never know. You never know. I do. That's so you know what's one. not up there? Wouldn't it be cool if there was a podcast helping new youth workers in like their first year or two of youth ministry? If only. Like, would that be... Isn't that what we do? Yeah, yeah it's kind of... But we just for specifically yeah. for like if there was some material in like the first Jason, I planted two I years of <laughs> youth ministry, I just because don't know. This feels so insider now. I said to Jason, <laughs> I've been thinking about if only. my book, your first two years of youth ministry, and read kind of like reading chapter one and then just talking about chapter one. It's an one. amazing idea. It's a pretty <laughs> great idea. I just have people write in specific questions it's about It's like a chapter fancier one. audio book kind of, right? Yeah, like an enhanced, enhanced audio book. I yeah. read it. I don't know if I would read it. Well, what if, well, what if, if he, I read it? What if he did 10 minutes <laughs> of reading? You have a great voice. Thank you. You have a great voice. You guys get Thank like you. Anthony Hopkins to read it. What if we could get cool. Denzel Washington yes, to read it? He yes, would. Oh my gosh, Morgan Freeman. Cool. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Dude. Have Morgan your Freeman <laughs> is the voice of God, right? Yeah. 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 I wish I could do I, his voice, yeah. man. So what are we saying with all this new stuff, John? So what we're saying is check out the great new shows in the Download Youth Mystery Podcast Network. Yay. You get to it. You just jump on iTunes or go to podcast downloadyouthministry.com and there's tons of show notes and downloads and you can meet the hosts and I really do think we're going to be adding more shows really soon. These are the launch shows. We've had an, an enormous amount of interest some really cool l kind of thinner slices of youth ministry that need a voice and so we'll be seeing what we'll be adding in the next few weeks. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And for anyone watching or listening, like, could they come up with a new idea? Absolutely. Yeah, I want a ladies in youth ministry. I want a little bit of yeah different perspective. Yeah, we're thinking. Mm, you should Actually, do Tori, that. my daughter texted me today. He's listening to one of the podcasts. Yeah. And she says, Katie's amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's so the I like Katie oh, on the, the flagship show, so let's not let her go to a no, women no, no, in youth no, ministry no, show. There that's, are that would be, that a, would be a billion great. awesome women in youth ministry out there. Yeah, but you could run that show, too. Why didn't, why didn't you, what you need is another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but there's more stuff exactly. going on. Uh -huh. I was just saying that. Katie is so great. Oh, um, that's very nice. Love Tori. Amazing. So great she could have her own show in the network and do this show. If you want it, let us know. <laughs> just let us know in the comments. We're in. <laughs> Things I would do differently after last night. That's the name of my show. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much 15 minutes with Yeah, it is. They're like, here's what worked. Here's it's really what didn't work. Always, I screwed up yesterday. <laughs> um, Josh, you had forwarded to be this, this email about a guy giving us an update. Yeah. Do you remember the... I, I don't. Oh, so you, would, did you like expect me to go back and... Oh, I don't I don't prep the show. We don't prep the show. No one preps the show. I read the questions, the but this part. was like a great update from somebody. Yeah. Oh. But it was a really beautiful note, and I was like, I don't want to just have this alone. I wanted to share it with someone, so I sent it to you. Oh, okay. Well, we'd have to go back to see what the question was. I'll just... Um, a listener was helped. I'm I guess that's all we're going to get. I am. Here's the line. It's a beacon for so many of us small town youth pastors. Oh, that's, that's nice. nice. That's Our a great... We've said it's a staff meeting. Yeah. Yes. You're sitting at the table. You're on the like team. Staff meeting. Hey, this is a question from uh, Pastor Matt Heron from Hillside Baptist Church in Dickinson, North Dakota. That's okay. Dickinson, North Dakota. <laughs> Um, what do you think of the state of summer camp? Ever since I became a youth pastor and got into youth work about 10 years ago, it seems like it has been getting harder and harder to get students interested in going to camp. Between sports camps, vacations, summer jobs, etc., it's hard to get them interested. 
I know this just isn't me, and I've heard about it from multiple youth pastors across the country. Do you think summer camp will be non-existent soon? And what is your take on this dilemma? Wow. Mm. Summer camp will be non-existent <laughs> soon. Shoot. You know, as I was reading it, I'm going, well, you know, I mean, even in the in the days before the internet, when I started in youth ministry, there was always vacations and summer jobs. Yeah. You know, so you it's not like those are new competitions. Right. But definitely sports camps and, mm -hmm. you know, that type of thing. Is yeah. Well, I think when you plan your summer camp, is going to help it or hurt it tremendously. If you plan it right after school lets out, which I like, it's not a great time because summer school alone will hammer that. And if you plan it too late in the summer, you have all the preseason sports. And so you're ruined. So I, I'm not ready to say summer camp is dead by any means. And I think, think about the best time for it to be. To me, that's square in the middle of summer, which isn't where I want it, but it's where the culture says it needs to be. So when we start our DYM summer camp, yeah, today, yeah, is that what we're going to do? Bring it'll be thousands and thousands of kids. It'll be the square in the middle of summer. <laughs> square, in the middle. square in the middle of the I've, DYM I've summer, summer experience. In the of the country. Yep. Gonna do a we're going to do probably thirteen of them. You don't want people to drive too far. Yeah. Hey, would you come to a DYM summer camp with your kids? Where are you going to do it? Maybe nearby. That would be great. If there's 13 <laughs> locations. You can pick anyone. No, yeah, I'm kidding. You can do it nearby because <laughs> transportation costs uh, are a killer. We could host a special one just just for you. Thank you. Well, we are here. doing yeah, right just here. a student <laughs> leadership conference, one of them in yeah. Yeah. Indiana. Which I like. And you, you, it's going to be one big fun event as opposed to some smaller regional stuff. So mm -hmm. it is a little more work to get there. It's not as accessible if you're from you know further south or whatever. Yeah, people fly yeah, in. For they do. It's a yeah. very inexpensive conference. Even it if is. you've already missed the Early and bird. I think we've also all done youth ministry enough to know that sometimes the trip, the travel, the yep. that is yep. as much a part of camp as anything else. Yep. Anyhow, back to the question. Sorry, I think you derailed us a little bit. So I was going to say, I, I just had this conversation last week with me and my assistant. We were talking about, for our, we had our first... Uh, uh, encounter youth winter camp just now. Oh, I saw it on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. How'd it go? It was awesome, man. It was so cool. And so, but we were discussing this, like it's, it is... I, we believe with all of our hearts in our in our area, it's harder to get kids to sign up for camp than it was ten years ago. Yeah, like it just. It, but if you, you know what, that's what Matt's saying. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's like plus one I, to Matt. I'm affirming. <laughs> I'm saying, but but, I, but we we talked about this. Like you have to make the personal ask. I think, um, like when I look at like Saddlebacks camps, like uh, my daughter's involved in your group, and it's like it's this like anybody who's anybody wants to be at that camp. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just such a powerful force. But like when you have these little youth groups of 10 kids, I mean, boy, you got, and I'm sure it's not easy, as easy as I'm making it sound. You probably got to hustle too, right? Piece of cake. But, but I mean, <laughs> for us, for us, you, like, I feel like we have to go talk to not just the kid to convince them this, you, you want to go trust us. You probably got to talk to the parents, right? You, probably you got, got to help figure out a financial path, right? Subsidize like, it, gotta, like lay yeah. it out for them. Yeah. And uh, boy, it's a new day because yeah. they don't just come sign up on the early bird special anymore. I mean, you got to give incentives and it's tricky. Free well, T-shirts. That's where it's at. You know, what, part <laughs> of the ask. Josh and I were, like I said, we were just with Doug Franklin yeah. talking about our student leadership conference, and we said. You know, one, what, what was the whisper comment? We had some, we were Oh, it's, yeah, some yeah you lines. whisper, it's whisper in whisper their ear event. event. Yeah. Like, it sounds a little creepy, but. <laughs> no, it sounds a lot of creepy, yeah, actually. Like, <laughs> hey, I want you to come to student leadership. <laughs> but, you know, kind of the thinking behind it was That's that funny. when you, what that says to a, a teenager. That, yeah. Hey, this isn't something that we're taking everybody to. But we're taking some people who are leaders or have leadership potential and you're, yeah. you know, kind of like you're calling them out and saying, I, I think this would make a difference in your life. Um, you know, then that personal ask. But when you are just blanketing a summer camp um, yeah. and throwing out an announcement and putting a slide up on the screen, it's a tough sell unless there's personal testimonies. Yeah. Small group leaders are making the ask. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. I'm thinking about. You said 10 kids, small group, how difficult that is. But for a large group like Katie, you know, everybody thinks, oh, it's Saddleback, it's, they get so many kids. Well, the difficulty on, correct me if I'm wrong, Katie, but when I would plan a camp, 
you have to commit to a certain number. I mean, if you want the yeah. camp, you've got to commit to a certain number of kids. And you're on and the line. The pressure's on because <laughs> you've just said, I need a camp for 500 kids or something like that. And right. each one is 225 bucks. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of dough yep. if you come up short. So there's right. pressure on both sides from the large group and the small group. I just think sometimes small group... Youth group people think, oh, it's so much easier when you have a lot of people. And there's a lot of pressure related to that. Is that right? Did yeah, you? totally. I mean, and I Absolutely. think, you know, I think with camp, you know, there's always the bigger question of, you know, what is the value of the overnight experience and stuff? And I don't know. I mean, I definitely think there's there's maybe a few more things we're competing with with sports and camps and stuff like that um, and definitely finances so camp is just getting more and more expensive and it just feels like ugh, if you have more than one kid going to camp you're you know buying a car basically so you know I think even just thinking through because I think getting away is not dead you know and I think right. the overnight experience we can't let it die because it's just so powerful to move students with small group leaders outside of the bubble of wherever you are. So I feel like as youth pastors, we have to fight for it to, yeah, to, to remain valuable. And, you know, and part of that is casting vision with your church leaders, casting vision with your parents of helping them understand the investment side of it. I, I find myself using that language a little bit more versus it's going to be so fun for your kids of this is a investment into their spiritual development and and just really um because i think that's how sports cast it you know that yeah. their vision of this is an investment into your kids college education potentially right so you got to do this sports camp with us well i think we have to compete with that and mm -hmm. talk about the powerful investment that summer camp can be i don't think it has to be at a camp i don't think it has to be one specific way I think, but the overnight experience, I think, is a powerful thing in yeah. ministry. So, and in a kid's life. I'll throw in a couple more things. One, I would say a new kid, and they've come to youth group a few times and whatever, camp can cement them in the group. Yes. Like, in the course of those five days, seven days, whatever it is, you know, if I had a mom come up to me and say, oh, man, my son's kind of on the outside, and they're not really connected yet, or we're new to the... Just get him to camp, and camp will work its magic. On the other end of camp, it will be a different kid, I promise. So I would say that would be a really strong reason. And then secondly, I would say for years, we've used it to launch the fall. It's to launch the back to school. It's to launch our small groups. And so you have this great cabin group, you and, you know, your, your female leader and five girls, they have this amazing time and it's awesome and it's great. Well, we just say, Hey, keep that going all year, join a small group together. And all of a sudden those, the community, the laughter, the fun, that taste they got at camp becomes the lifestyle that they now get for the next year. So, so game changing. So outsiders become insiders and insiders find community I am mm -hmm. I am a big proponent of camp. Oh, yeah. I'm in. Camp's life-changing. I've seen so... In 20 years of youth ministry, that's what I've told parents every time. You get a kid to camp, just like you said, they're going to be lifers. Yep. And they're, they're going to they're gonna be the ones that stick. They, they become disciples. It's really good. I think one of the points I just had was that, like, uh, we're also competing with culture. I feel like um, all of society has become very apathetic and noncommittal. In, in anything, right? right? I mean, so... Be, I wish I could commit to that, but... Yeah, <laughs> or even even just waiting to see, you know, someone sends out a text and they say, do you guys want to go hang tonight? And then people wait and see if something better comes along, right? Right, right. People just... We're just in a culture where it doesn't, doesn't seem like people are going for it as much. And so, I hate that. Yeah, but... When, People have forgotten how to communicate, right? <laughs> That's why when you announce camp, you have to you have to get the five influencers in your group yeah. to already say yeah. So be like, hey, Joey, are you going? Yeah, well, see, Joey's going. Sarah, Sarah's going. And all of a sudden, people are like, man, Joey yeah. and Sarah are going. I'm going to go too. Yeah, but why is it some <laughs> of the camps like you know big stuff? Who's in Panama City? I realize it's on the beach. It's beautiful. Mm. Yeah, I've been there many times. Spoken at a whole bit. They don't have any problem. I mean, they sell out right away, right? Because the youth pastor commits to twelve spots. Whatever right, it is. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, a huge camp here, Hume Lake, has they are they are constant. That is a yeah, you massive. Can't you can't. You can't yeah, get in. Because kids have a great experience and they come back. And they tell everybody. Yeah, they tell everybody. Yeah. And so I, I think, you know, there is this spot for uh, Josh and we talked about that. You know, like what if DYM did a summer camp and served served other uh Youth ministries. There's a bunch of them out there. Yeah. From there. I'm sure they're all fabulous. We mm -hmm. just have our, yeah. you know, our spin on that. Yep. And Katie could speak at it. Jason could uh, bring some students at it. <laughs> <laughs> I love camp. 
understand so much. I really do. You know, when I was in seminary, we, I took this class called like camp and recreation or <laughs> youth ministry outside of the church or something. Cool. Yeah. And I remember this, this phrase, whether it was, I want to say Henrietta Mears, who was one of the pioneer women leaders in the evangelical church. She started, um, uh, gospel light publishing company. Right, right. She started forest home, yeah. which is a big camp out here. Right. Huge. Um, but her line was, more Christian education takes place in a weekend of camp yeah. than in 52 weeks of Sunday school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good word. Yeah. It's, it's a good word. You know, it's just that, you know, concentrated, defined curriculum. You yeah. Know, it's mm -hmm. just a, well, relationally and then in messages and God time and worship, whatever you want to call that conversation, it is, it is an exponential I, I week. Think that's why as youth pastors, like I said, I think we have to, you really, we have to commit to not letting something like that die. Yeah. You know, if you feel that, then yeah. what do, what do you do to get on the front end of that? You know, cause I am not willing to let that die in my culture. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> and I think, I think stories is a big part of yeah, it. And, for I, sure. and I have a personal one. My daughter became a follower of Jesus this past summer at summer camp. Mm -hmm. So to me, I'm like, this isn't an old youth pastor saying you need to stick with summer camp because it's awesome. I'm going, okay. my daughter trusted Jesus this summer. Yeah. It works. Something happens. It's powerful. Yeah. Sunday school or youth group. Exactly. Hey, uh, continue to send your questions into podcast at downloadyouthmystery.com. Uh, this is from Jesse Lofton. How can I, as a leader, build a culture amongst my team where they bring me constructive criticism or critical problems? In the last month, I've had a few situations where I've learned that one or two leaders knew blank but didn't discuss it with me, and so it was never addressed and grew into a bigger problem. I've encouraged them to bring me feedback, but it feels like they think they'll be letting me down by bringing up some of these things. Interesting. Well, a pat answer would be, be approachable. And, and I think... Smile. I, I, yeah, smile. Be <laughs> someone that people... But I would say this. I would consider myself highly approachable. Relationally, mm. that is not enough. You do have to be intentionally ask for it or whatever. Create. You can't just be a likable... Because sometimes people are like, I just don't want to hurt his feelings. He's super approachable. I just don't want to bum him out. Yeah. Like, well, so. sometimes I think self-evaluation is a little misguided in that you go... I think I'm real. Like they can, people can tell me anything. <laughs> exactly. And Kathy and I were having a conversation. I don't know. It seems like yesterday because it was so painful, but it was a few months back. <laughs> I, we were talking about listening. I was reading something on listening, and I said, "Hey, rate me on a listener from like one to ten. <sighs> and I had already in my mind knew that she was going to say nine or ten. <laughs> I just was like, "Yeah, yeah I know. nailed it." I'm a great listener. I ask great questions. I make good eye <laughs> She gave me a six. Oh yeah. no! And you know, Kathy. Kathy's not six like six is better than a five. I, true. <laughs> oh, six is yeah. or a four. Yeah, I don't know. That it means you suck, is what that means. Yeah. A six. <laughs> you about a nine or a ten. Oh. Then she had legit no no legit illustrations. I'm like, funny she bring that up. Here's my notes app. I have a little list going. <laughs> Here's, here's my but, friend. I'm oh, yeah, you praise that. the Lord. I think <laughs> you know, sometimes you go, you think something about mm -hmm. yourself and your own relationships right. or your leadership style. It's not really true. It's not true. You, you know, put put it to the test. Uh -huh. So, you know, to, to Jesse here, I might say, you you know, I've tried as a as a to build a culture where they can Maybe, maybe you need to hold the mirror up and ask right. a little deeper question. It's or entirely possible. on a scale of one to ten, yeah. how ten being totally open, do you yeah. feel like you can be with me? I'm just yeah. curious. Yeah. yeah. And let them just give you a bunch of sixes and you go, oh. <laughs> yeah. Crap. Yeah. Depending on the size <laughs> of the team. Or pain that's coming out. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's it's good. This is, ours. It's like therapy. It's, it's nice. Therapy. It's good. That's Depending nice. on the size of the team, like <laughs> if, if you pass out, I mean, I, I worked with 30 to 40 leaders if I passed out an anonymous survey every week or once a month that said, hey, what's one thing that we could do better as a ministry? What's one thing that I could serve you as your leader, as, as leaders? How can I equip you better? What are practical ways? I'm just asking some of those questions. And if you really want to know and worried about people feeling if it's anonymous, what what could possibly go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> I so love your it. Heart could be broken, and you yeah. can well, design yeah, quit next. ministry yeah. forever and work yeah. at McDonald's. Gotta weed them out. The weak ones. <laughs> <laughs> Just have them write something. 
on like the week, the month before, have them write a little letter or something like that, so you grab their handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> then you can match it up and be like, oh, nice. I'm gonna nope. take her out. No, I think that for this, could something practical could be to practice with people. So. I don't think I'm always the most approachable, um, mainly because my emotions are always on my face. So, like, I think sometimes I'm not that approachable. But what something that helps me and my own team is asking for feedback and helping them practice telling you things. So I think the more it's okay to ask for direct feedback, like, hey, give me your take on last night. And that's a moment for them to practice sharing with you that kind of feedback because you're asking for it directly. Mm -hmm. So I think if you can get in a few direct conversations with some of the people on your team um, and even get in the habit of of asking for it um, from time to time, it just helps them practice telling you stuff. And then I think they get into a little bit more of a comfortable place of giving you information. I like that. I was actually thinking we should do like a Dallin Youth Ministry University training or a leader or something where we talk about this Mm -hmm. from a training perspective. Because I think it'd be valuable for someone else to say, create a culture in your ministry where you give each other feedback and you push each other to be better and the best and we communicate well. Like, I think it's hard for a lead youth worker to just make this announcement like, I'm approachable and give me feedback, even if it's difficult for me to hear. But a, a third party saying that might be easier to introduce that concept, at least. I don't yeah, know. and we got to acknowledge, too, this, this for a lot of people probably listening, this is hard stuff, right? I mean, I, I would say, I, you were saying you don't think you're that. I think you're super approachable. Well, you. For me, I've, I've been accused of not being approachable. I can see that. Emma, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Saw that coming. Um, that was it, a six it, right it, there. It is, <laughs> it is hard. Like, I, I hate being not approachable. Well, like, part I don't, of it, don't you think part of it comes along with confidence, too? Like, I think the more confident you are, mm-hmm. the, you, you know, the more right you seem to your audience, whoever it might be, mm-hmm. you know, you're a little older. And so, you know, what's a 22-year-old going to say to you that... Sure. You know, so they may not. I mean, there may maybe a lot of factors. Yeah, highly you know. respected elder, right? That, that's hard for someone to have the guts to say something. Totally. And yeah. leading up, leading up is a tricky thing. You know, so even mm. like I know I'm in a boss relationship with people, and I know there's there are walls between us yeah. that no matter how hard I try or how many times I yeah. write a note or I say I'm approachable, there's oh, those walls exist. So you know, I think that's why it's important to like. There's different kinds of feedback too. So practice with lighter feedback and then work into things too. I think that yeah, I like helps that. people that's just good. feel a little bit more comfortable with mm-hmm. just talking about things. Tear down the First walls. Thing I hate feedback. I just, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it. I really don't want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> I really, I I'm pretty know. great. I know I'm a six and I'm okay with that. <laughs> this stack of questions says people want our feedback. So let me go. Okay, here we go. <laughs> uh, Kyle Ruff. <laughs> Kyle Ruff. I don't think it's I know be Kyle Ruff. Ruff. I, know, I just kind of like that. First time caller. I don't know. Um, <laughs> what's the worst purchase you ever made with your budget? Oh, oh my goodness. I have one of these. What's, a, what's a budget? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one time I thought I would go, I would spend too much money and I bought a t-shirt cannon, like a little catapult gun that shoots out a, and it broke on the very first oh, time we ever used no. it and it sat in the youth closet and it was a really good one. And I, I spent too much and it was a terrible, I just thought, you know how you go to like an event and they're shooting guns. I'm like, this it's will be awesome. awesome. We'll have them and I'll shoot kids at point blank range. It'll be so fun. Mm-hmm. And we can use it at an event. We could do it. Is this when you were in Wisconsin? No, no, it was Saddleback. the Saddleback. Yeah. So it's still. I say in Wisconsin, you could have just tossed them out. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. So, I mean, it was a fortune and it broke day one and I, I, it just oh. sat in the closet. And I just, every time I walked in, I was like, it was like painful. Tie the money paid for that yeah. piece of plastic that's oh, sitting in the corner. Um, it was, yeah, it was, Terrible. yeah, God fearing yeah. man would have reimbursed the church. For I should have. I still, well, you could still go back, Josh. I could, I could reverse, I could start reverse <laughs> tithing soon. That'd be great. Just give away all my money to the church. It was expensive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. T-shirt cannon. I think. Yeah. It sounded I, cool. Like, you know, like those are they're so yeah, fun. They are cool. They are like, fun. Camps and yeah. Like, and yeah. Where they belong. 
<laughs> Can you imagine shooting a kid with one of those from six feet away? It, you got to catch it in order to get the T-shirt, and then you just thwop them right in the. Think about how many Bibles you could have bought. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll do one. I I, tell you I'll do one for Doug. Uh, Doug, <laughs> <laughs> what if we had to do every? If we had to justify every expense versus how many Bibles it'd be worth. That'd oh, be gosh. rough. My Can't go to the Angels game right now. because that. that's thirty-seven Bibles <laughs> per seat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a long time ago, you uh, there was a I was a youth pastor in Michigan, and it was an email from forever ago, and it was Doug in front of fifty empty seats at an Angel game, oh, yeah. and he was like, "I screwed up, and just thought I'd share this picture of it what it looks like when a youth pastor screws up." And it was I don't know how much money, but it was a lot of money, and that stuck with me. That's probably twenty years ago. Yeah, that picture. That was I still remember that, but it was a doozy. I don't know. I don't even remember what happened. So, but well, no one showed up. It was summer summer calendar. Summer you know, event. during the summer, you have you plan different different things, and you go, <laughs> well, we can buy we'll buy a hundred seats. That'll be nothing, you know. Or right. Whatever. And bought a hundred seats and like fourteen. Brutal. <laughs> 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 yeah. No. That was, yeah. That's rough. That, yeah. yeah. I just thought I'd bring that up. That up. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I give it a six. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I purchased uh, this. This wasn't. I don't think it was a bad purchase. Yeah, but apparently the board did. Oh, so yeah. I had bit my eyes set on this box truck to carry luggage and to move like for all of our summer trips, a our winter box trips, truck. everything we did. Yeah, a box expensive. truck. And wow. so, no, it what was do you mean? A, no budget. <laughs> Well, I've never, nobody bought, a, I've never bought a car with my youth ministry. It's, it's like a yeah. Small I know. I was like, wait, wait a truck. Just you rent know, like a the tr- door that rolls up in the back, and I'm not even part of your board, and I'm freaking out right now. Keep going. <laughs> Come on. You know, we we had 150 kids in the youth ministry. Okay. And we Humble were doing, brag. We were doing seven trips a year. Humble brag. How many um, Bibles? How many Bibles could those trips? <laughs> we were taking Bibles down to Mexico. Oh my! In your movies. box truck? Yes, okay. we were actually. You, know what? Right. you should have fixed his T-shirt can. Yeah, you could have filled that box truck. You could have shot box. those Bibles so far into Mexico; it'd have been awesome. <laughs> anyway, so I, I over the wall. I thought for like kids you think you're listening. You're, you. you're great. Um, I actually was saving for this thing. Through like fundraisers and events we did, any extra income that came in, we put it towards this. Like it wasn't like a budgeted item. Yeah. It was like something I had my eyes set on for like the first five years of my youth. Instead of your eyes on the Lord, oh, they were on this box. We <laughs> and so, so the time came where I had it, you know, I think we got it for, for $14,000 and it was like this, it was like this 18 foot box truck. Yeah. My we were able to t-shirt gum was three, 300 bucks and I was freaking out over we it just for the record. <laughs> guys and uh we used it all the time we loved it and the whole time the the uh, elder board was just like do you really need that and it's like well look at how we're using it we're taking 95 kids down to mexico to build homes and bring supplies we're going to summer camp four times like all these things we were doing yeah i got so they said well give us how many days you're using it per year and so i I had to come up with all the days that we used it for whatever event we used it. It was something like 60, and they thought that wasn't enough. And it was like, how is that not You started enough? driving your kids to school in it yeah. just to get the numbers higher. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you got the 95 kids. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Threw them in the box truck. So anyway, I, love I still think it was a great purchase. And to this day, they fought me on it. And, oh. and then near the end of... My youth ministry, they sold it behind my back. Oh. And I did it, did it without even asking. Oh, yeah, wow. we sold it. Like, what? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, they're tired of paying. A little bit of pain. I'm tired of paying for maintenance on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be an elder just to make a youth pastor. That would be oh, no, so. No, you'd be a great. You'd have, want to be a great I, elder. I would. Just because, I would want to be. Um, you'd I, I, I want to do it right. See why you buy the box truck. You do. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Well, in your, I know your church. Tires. Yeah. 14,000 is a lot of dough. Oil. Any, or really at any church. Transmission fluid. But they raise them Rota- Rotating the tires. It feels like, though, that would be something that in your tenure of youth ministry that you would know to kind of like get buy-in along the way. You should have just bought it in your name and well, the churches. Uh, believe me, this <laughs> was like the, a, the whole church <laughs> was against <laughs> this idea. It's against there the was law. two elders <laughs> that were the <laughs> power play guys. Yeah. Totally against the idea. Hey, hey, just, to, really just to recap, <laughs> Katie's thought was take the money and buy it in your own name, which is money laundering, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I didn't well, 
well, isn't it like, it like don't that. churches buy church vans for twenty five thousand? I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel a lot better about my t-shirt cannon all of a sudden. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, really, thank you for ministering to our audience. Uh, yeah. yeah, everybody can relate to a box truck mishap. Yeah. Am I right? <laughs> I would love to have a box truck of my own. Oh, yeah. So, what? Yeah, what? I would love most, it. Yeah. Most youth workers are like, I just want a box to put my stuff in, and you have a whole truck. What was your worst? You, yeah. By now, you've certainly thought of bad expenditures. I just, I'll, my most recent one, maybe. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty, but, um, <clears throat> we bought this thing. Um, it's like, I really wanted to do, put get it. <laughs> sorry. Oh, that went well. <laughs> we bought this thing. It's called the chamber of wonders and you, it hooks up to like fans and you, it's like an inflatable thing where, you know, it's like a money grab. Oh yeah. Like money flying around in it. Yeah. Like, like a fun game. Or flying around yeah. in it. You put fans in it and they blow all around inside and you put kids in. Well, we bought this thing from China and it was like $500 and it just, we, it's terrible. It like barely works, but we keep using it on the off chance that maybe like this time it will be cool. And it's not, we've used it four times and it's never been the money, cool. Does the money just sit at the bottom? It just, you have to like shake it to get everything to f all the papers to fly around. Hilarious. And it like barely, it's terrible and it's ugly and it looks cheesy and it's, it's the, it's the worst purchase I've made in the last couple of years. So. Yeah, it's a funny idea. But though. I keep trying. Yeah, I, it know, is a funny idea. Because I want to make it worth the investment. So it's like you put a special kid in there for whatever reason. They get, like they, yeah, and they, they want. grab like pieces of paper for prizes or yeah. something like that. Camp scholarship it money. Box, free works. box truck if you grab yes, enough paper. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we brought it up to our winter camp. And I was like, I was telling somebody on my team, I'm like, I don't know. This thing sucks. It just never works. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, no. It'll be good. It'll be good this time. It'll be good this time. And I'm like, and it's, oh, for, I'm ready to throw it in the trash, but I can't because it was expensive. When you and throw it away, there's a... Set it next to the... <laughs> 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 just to gra go into the youth oh, closet, the closet and grab so that, will you? every time we use it because even oh, the kids are like, oh, this whoa. is so dumb. Like, it's yeah. just so... <laughs> they just hold their phones and they're like... A bit now. Yeah, totally. It's so dumb. It's just so dumb. I don't know. So, that's oh, so the, the irony here, I'm getting mocked for buying a box truck to go do ministry at all these trips, yeah. and, and you guys are getting t-shirt cannons yeah, and, and the grabs. Chamber of Secrets. I know, totally. Changing lives. Well, I Chamber like, of Secrets. You probably thought it was something I would, I was like, oh, this will be good. We'll use this all, we'll use yeah. this for a long time, oh, yeah. you know, so we'll make an investment yeah. in something fun, and it's just terrible. Or use it once, and it doesn't it's work. It's terrible. I've used it four times. It's terrible. Every no, time. I would turn it into a bit. Like, it just never works. Yeah, so it's you the have worst. To, you have to you literally have to sit Get Indian style on the ground to, to like stuff grab, down, grab stuff. And yeah. whenever the kid can grab yeah. the way down, <laughs> you just, just fill it with pudding and yes. it just drops oh, on your head. It's something. So bad, you guys. It's just so, it's so anticlimactic. I it's just terrible. have a I different story it. each time of why it's going to work this time. Yeah. Yeah. You know what we did? We sent it to, we got a new rotor, totally. you know, whatever. Yeah. Yes. Every yeah. time it's a new story. It's a Spin Master 3000 fan underneath it. That's going to. I can turn this around. I turn it into a bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's bad. This is all new in Enhanced. You, you add a new word each time. You guys Ultra the super. Next DYM 100 or something. Yeah. Extreme. Oh wait. Add that to the list, <laughs> Allison. Right now. It's, DYM 100. We're doing the cash yeah. grab. It'll be so ridiculous, and you'll just. This die. is awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cash grab. Like, we'll make uh, it work. Yeah. yeah. DYM cash. Oh yeah. <laughs> Monopoly money. That, uh, Darren Dellen, who's on our website for all the do it yourself. Oh yeah. The DIY category well, he, on DYM is run by him. Yeah. He came with me this weekend to camp. He is he, so good. He did try. He brought his like electric leaf blower to try to get this working. <laughs> if so anyone can actually, get it working, if anybody can do something, Darren Dellen Darren, can do it. Best. It's true. Yeah. Sure. Every, every youth ministry needs like a handy person to like, oh, that can just tinker so and build. And yeah. he's that guy and you're, oh, he's a good dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, right, I like him a lot. We got to okay. uh, do another show. Podcast Network. Yep. We, week one. We're going to end yep. 327 and go right into 328. Okay. I've got a stack of questions here. Woo! Excellent. Box trucks for life. We've got to get to a little more questions. Allison, we have a, we have a Chamber of Secrets. Chamber of Secrets. Chamber, Chamber, Chamber of Secrets is pretty strong. It's Patented. terrible. Yep. It, I or, call it a six. I'd call it a six. Yeah, I'd give it a six. I That'd be good. Six. Box trucks and t shirt cans. And there's a lot of options on this one. Meh, I yeah. give it a six. Empty. <laughs> give it a six. Are you talking about the show or the title? I don't know. We'll see you next time, everybody. Bye-bye.